He's out of his mind, and he's drifting in and out of his <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're so happy to be here. Matt, Matt have you, have you see how long this room is, brother? It's a long room. There's a lot a of people here. There, there, there it goes. There it goes. There goes. By, a round of, by a round of applause and blood hurtling streams, as Rich likes to say. Who was at karaoke last night? <laughs> Sorry for the rest of you. You missed a hell of Who here? I, I, I want to know this, man. Who here? And, and be honest, who here wasn't at karaoke last night? Those are the rest. Of You're really fired up about it. I like their like enthusiasm at least. No shame at all. Just like, it's like who missed my wedding? I did. Yeah. 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 Live your life. That's a great way to live your life. And hey, we're really bummed you didn't make the wedding. Well, it was great for me. Yeah. I know. It's a long... Hey, Jen. Want to do that on mic? That's... You know, Matt, I think I'm out of mic range. No, I can hear you. I was going to test that. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Matthew Cohen. By the way, if you're near Matthew Cohen, go touch him. Don't listen to anything that Rich says. Look no, there you go. Go touch him. Go touch him. You think I'm kidding, I'm not. Go touch Matt Cohen. Everybody in the back. You guys, may... guys, if you're taller than Richard Spain, go touch him now. Go. Everybody in the room. That's everybody. Look, that's everybody. I'm going down the middle. They can, Except they can me. touch me all they want. Touch him. They can touch me all they want. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Rich. This is great. I, you can actually ruin the entire panel like you like to do, only from a great distance. This is fabulous. Awesome. You look, you look you know, smaller than usual from back here. You know, I, like I know, pockets. right? I'm like pocket size. I finally got rid of the two of you. Yeah. 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 Oh wow. Now and I don't have to check any bags. And look, people, people, are, people are touching me, Rich. Look who suddenly woke up, Sir Richard. I hear you with your your comedic bass riff. What does that sign with? say? I need every I need everybody to clear the aisle. I'm about to do something. Oh, he's going to do something that involves running up the aisle. Okay, so. okay, everybody's looking like it's going to be awesome. Is this your famous shirt? Be careful, we don't want to wake Grandpa. Young, young lady. So, this is, this is, this is for you, Richard. Um, when I came up... Matt, Matt's least favorite thing. Okay, go ahead. When I came to Vegas Con back in March, um, I, like you guys know, that last year around this time in September, was a really dark time for you guys in my life um, over the last three months because you told me at the biggest time that I wasn't allowed to hurt myself anymore. Yes. It, it's done it again. I mean, over the last three months, there's been times where I've gotten close to just remembering that you said that to me. Yes, you're not allowed to hurt yourself. That's a, that's a Dick, Matt, and Rob rule. Yes. There will be no self inflicted wounds. Thank 
You're welcome, but I'll tell you something. We're not doing it. You're doing it for yourself. We're helping one another way. That's fabulous. But you're making that decision. You're empowering yourself. You're doing the right thing, and we're proud of you. Keep it up. And, that is, and stay safe and stay kind to yourself. And that is our only rule here. That being said, I do ship myself and Rob. Welcome, Chuck Chester. Yeah. I didn't hear. I didn't hear the oh that time. Next question. You be a lady. Oh my gosh, I'll lie back. The weird thing is the mic is facing the wrong direction, I'm not sure. <laughs> there you go, is it on? Is it on now? There we go. Hello, Richard. Hello. I'm really nervous. Okay, so, like I said when I was getting my autograph, Gabriel is the one I Gabriel's your favorite character. I'm sorry, Robin. I heard that with my bad ear. Gabriel's her favorite character. Gabriel and Lucy. And Gabriel at Lucifer. Oh my god. Okay. How good? <laughs> Hello. I'm going to get rid of that. That happens, yeah. Oh, God okay, bless. So, Thank you so much. Much. What? what? Beers for the guys? Oh, and you. You just go answer your question, Mr. Yeah. Favorite Character. I mean, we're over here. Sorry, I'm having a moment. Yes. One more question. What's it like to work with? What's it like to work with Mr. Mark Pellegrino? Yeah. All right. Mark. A is a fantastic guy. B, he's a creepy as hell actor to work with. First time I worked with, this is a made up thing. That's uh, cut your, cut your, there's no cut your cock off. There's no one that can cut your cock off. This is the cut your cock off party. That's, there's, no. It's not a real person. It's, it's not a real party. It's not. No. Party you don't, never existed. And you don't have a missing member. Cut your cock off. I'll be right back. I got. I gotta go to registration. I'll be honest. If the Dallas Cutter Cockoff family is here, I apologize for the joke. And I hope you find your member. However, I have a hunch. Maybe your missing member probably hanging around, hanging out around the organ. So go, go to where the organ is. <laughs> we paid them for three days. Finally, they show up. Good. Well done. But hey, I got a free ticket. Well, not a free um, ticket, but I got a right. ticket. <laughs> <laughs> a hat on a hat. I'll get to see Richard Pellegrino later. Pellegrino is very, very, he's like, first time I met him, he was actually in the Lucifer, the rotting Lucifer makeup. And he was sitting there and he was just staring at his own hand. And, he like, and I went over and I'm like, hey, I'm working with Mark Pellegrino. I really like him. Hey, Mark. And he's like, hello. And I thought to myself, bad word, this band is actually going to kill me. This is not going to be an acting class, this is going to be murder on film. But he's an amazingly fun guy. And he was, the, the funny Mark Pellegrino thing is, he used to not come to karaoke, he's like, no, I don't want to come. And finally we enticed him backstage, Matt and I did, with our usual trick, scotch. And we got him to come backstage and hang out and have a few drinks. I'm like, Mark, you got to step on stage, it'll be really fun. He's like, I don't think so. Then he had a scotch. Mark, you should really come on stage. Your hands are going nuts. I don't think so. Second scotch. He was standing on a table singing Big Balls by ACDC. Back when there was like things to stand on. Before you, before you were British dialect too. Like when it's I know. Up, like, I've got big balls. <laughs> Let us make it abundantly clear. He was leaping out on the, I think back then there were still chairs up front, and not looking at the words. The man knew the words to Big Ball. Did not need the help of a screen. He's a great guy. Well, Aside from I have one more thing. Yes. Do you guys ever do like bro photos for Gabriel Because I would pay. Do we do what? Like bro photos, like Gabriel Lucifer. Like photos. Oh, joint photos. I guess we call them brodos. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever done that. All right. Well, listen, uh, Adam. The, the the kids they want a, they want a photo of, of me and Lucifer. And, 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 and thank you for the suggestion. The problem is Lucifer is very busy. He's working on several other shows. Um, I'm very sad your open schedule. No, I think he's actually coming to one. Of, I think he's on. He's slated to come to one of these bad boys. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's going to be here for a lot in 2015. Work from, from, from the says, top. Work from the top. And I just heard him say, money doesn't matter. It, just, it doesn't matter. Blank check from our Pellegrino. Email out, Pellegrino. And whatever's left over the band gets. I heard, you heard it here. All right, you young lady. Just to ask you a question. Don't worry about these guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one that almost passed out from Robbie Lowe. Why are we turning the mic sideways? I'm missing, I'm, I'm not understanding this theory. <laughs> It's fine. Just talking to the mic. That's, oh, there's this is the hugging. And the hugging began. Go ahead, what's up? I was wondering if there are any stories about on set. I think. Uh, about on set. Uh, I would do this yesterday. What the hell are you doing with your phone? You this with me yesterday. Yes. I'm sorry. I, if there okay, is any stories about that. on set or um, traveling that I haven't heard, that any of, none of us have heard, because I heard about the really rough flight yeah. from it's Australia. Yeah. Whatever it was. And, one of y'all was Sydney to Melbourne. Yep. I, well, I got around to sleep. He was dead asleep. I think we've I think we've been rehashing the same stories for about five years. I don't know if there's yeah. anything fresh in the uh Can you um well there's always new stories. Alright, lay it on the right. I told the nine one one story and that was good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Rob yeah. The bed, which I I meant for Rob, the bed. Rob's creepy, share the bed wrong story. Or, uh, <laughs> um Yes. Super hot. <laughs> and uh, <That's> sticky. <laughs> when that name came up, it reminded me of the story where you made me sign in with a. Oh yeah. So I, Rob and I were doing Comic Con, and I we were staying in the same hotel. And I got there first, first and checked in, and so I just handed Rob a sheet when he got there. I'm like, we're under aliases, which we do sometimes. I'm like. This is your alias, so go check in under this alias. And he went to the front desk. I don't remember where it went from here, but I know you went to the front desk and you said, hello, I have a name under... Now, he mispronounced it, so it, it, the whole joke was scuttled. But he was supposed to say that he was checked in under the name I'd written, which was Haywood Jablomi. <laughs> but he but it probably went up and he's like... I, 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 I have a room at the top. Under, um, hey, would you, hey, Jablom? Hey, is it Jablom or Jablom May? Maybe? There's no accent in Koo or the E, but. I'm ruining my whole bit. And yet, still, you look like an A-O. I don't know how. Hey, would you? Now you both look like the whole Hey, would you, Jablom? And then I had to go to the lady, I'm like, no, 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 no. It's Haywood to blow me, but that's not his real name. It's not his room. Forget it. Just screw it. Right. Thank you for the question. Thank you. you. Hello. Turn the damn mic. That's weird. Well, it's because it's feeding back. Yeah, but I can't hear her. Yeah, but it's feeding back, so. Here, we'll just split the difference. Here. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, so my question has to be, um, actually, where do you guys get, like, your... Uh, inspiration for like mannerisms of your characters, like these little uh, things, like um, the way you walk, lean on things. Like it, it really uh, creates the character. I think. Where do you guys get your inspiration from? Robbie. <laughs> Top potato. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, for me, it just kind of comes organically. You know, um, it, um, uh, you know, it, a lot of it comes with the clothes you're wearing. Um, you know, if you're playing a cop, you see something, you're like, why do cops walk, walk like a-holes? And then you like, when you wear that? And we apologize to the men in my mind. I'm not saying Rob Benedict's Twitter address for the Dallas Police Force is at Rob Benedict, two B's, R-O-B-B-E-N-E-D-I-C-T. See what happens here, he hands the question to me. And you insult uh, an entire profession of service men and women. First responders, I like to call them. And then, and then, but in the name of comedy, I guess. <laughs> anyway, you were ragging on the cops. You're, Go ahead. you're a mean person. Anyway, and then you realize when you got the holster on, it actually kind of makes you walk like that. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. You have a robe on. Yeah, it changes your game. Yeah, when you have a robe on and boxer shorts and your chuck, and like all of a sudden, you know, you do certain things. So for me, like, my outfit has a lot to do with sort of how I. What about you, ass face? Did you. <laughs> In all seriousness, was this in the script? He said, and was it you that had it up here like this? They gotta just say it. I mean, it's a, 
to your point, it, a lot of what, you know, the set you're on, the outfit you're wearing, and sort of how the, the roadmap they've given you, you kind of sort of, you, they give you a lot of leeway to play. They've given you great pointers and things you have to hit on, and then you can play within that framework. And I think it does also matter the other actors' choices, how they relate to you. So you, you respond in kind. So a lot of it is on the fly. But then once you're committed to it, like once you've done one episode, then that's, those mannerisms then stay. You build, you build on that. Even if you're not in the road, you still right. kind of have, you know. Right. Matthew? I disagree with everything Rich says. Yep. I know. Uh, next question. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. What is the best prank that each of you has ever pulled in your entire life? Okay. Uh, best prank we've ever pulled. What about you, Robbie? He started it. I'm not. I've never pulled a prank on anybody. He's Mr. Prank. The best prank the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. Well, I believe in the devil. The only thing I'm afraid of is Kaiser Sose. Richard Spade, we you ask the question? Nope. I, I don't know. I'm not a prank. How about the hey, would you blow me? You in a hotel. In college. Big fan. Every day of my life with this man. I put... There's never been a day where he hasn't pranked me. I'm not a big prank guy. Yeah, you are. Only to you. To you. To you. To your college roommate. To no. Your team, sort of things. No, not like, those guys. You made those guys do something. Never. Matthew, God damn. What? <laughs> I'm here for you. Supernatural fans are going to go bananas, and she said, "I know." <laughs> it wasn't my choice, but it was a there was a supernatural influence to it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a question for all three of you. That's perfect. That's we're all three awesome. here. <laughs> this is a good timing. Because uh, we all know that all three of you guys like doing music stuff and stuff like that. Uh, if you three formed a band. What genre would you be and what would your band name be? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know who do most of the heavy lifting. No, no I think we'd be like a Beastie Boys. <laughs> like, you know me, white rappers. What do you think? Bob Dick in the chest. You know what I'm saying? Bob Dick in the chest. <laughs>
make it digital, put it out of the 45, and make some money off that nonsense, because that's not yeah. it. And you get ready. The woman, the woman over here is asking where the nearest ophthalmologist is. <laughs> yes. She asked if we were born hot. The help? I like you. I like you. We, we all like you. Um, and no, the, for me it's been, it's been Rich, countless, countless surgeries. Rich, he's a late bloomer. Really, really late. It's about to happen. He's, he's almost in his awkward phase. Yep. Matt was obviously born hot. The doctor saw him. Saw him the doctor looked at the whatever sonogram and was like, holy shit, that's a hot baby. Pardon my language, and I apologize for my language, but holy shit, that's a hot baby. <laughs> I know I'm a medical professional, I shouldn't be doing this, but you're sweet and first one crap. Is it a boy or a girl? I don't know, but it's smoking hot. I can't see the genitals. I don't need to see the genitals. That's hot. And for me it was more like, oh, he's just so little. But he's cute, he's super cute, but oh hey little guy, and I was like 21. And that's the story of how we became hot. That's how we... That's the, the origin. The, the heat origin. You. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing very well. Okay, hey, uh, questions for all three of y'all. Perf. Who's the biggest nerd out of y'all? Oh, Rob. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a close second. I'm a close second. And Matt's a distant third. Third. Distant third. Distant third. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's be honest. Yes. I, yes. We're Bob and Nick. The, Rob, and I, Rob and I are both fathers, and I drive a minivan, and I do it with pride. I have no shame in driving my minivan. You really drive a minivan? No, I roll in the minivan, and I like my minivan. That's my minivan. And I drive a Toyota Highlander, which is a minivan in disguise. <laughs> I would like so, a minivan, but it's a by, by round of applause, who agrees with me that nerd is the new hot sexy? <laughs> by a round of applause, who would applaud anything Matt Cohen said? <laughs> get, real, get, real, get real quiet. Get real quiet. Cheers. <laughs> It drops in January. That's funny. I heard that with my bad ear, and that's funny. You. Hi, so um, me and my friend came to the census. I was Gabriel yesterday. And All right. Charlie. Well done. I was wondering if y'all could pick a character to do a epic team up with for just one episode. Who would it be? We get to be in, a, in an episode with that character. In an with Are we character. with each other? In the episode? Other than ourselves. We're going to be good. All right, now I'm going to go with Abaddon. Abaddon? Abaddon? Oh, don't, don't, don't make that face. It's because you, you wanted to do an Abaddon episode and I got Abaddon. You know what I'm saying? You're too busy shipping each other. I'm over here with Abaddon. Um, Abaddon. I go with like somebody that I haven't met yet on the show that I didn't have any scenes with. Like, uh, oh, geez, Shepard just came in my head. But never. I never say Shepard. I know we make fun, but like, that would be fun to do a scene with Shepard. Because in between takes, you'd be like, no. I don't like the way you're doing it. No. Hey, Mark, want to run lines? No. Want to have lines like this? No. I really like working with you. Did you have a good time? No. Yeah, he'd be a fun character. He'd be a fun blast. <laughs> Tomo would be fun to do. Tomo. <laughs> with his perfect enunciation. Tambo, who says everything crystal clear. I've never met a larger man with better diction. Larger Canadian than Tambo Kinnikett. Richard, I find you funny. I do, I find you very funny. You know, and Rob, 
you are also entertaining. And offering. I mean, here's the thing about this show. Side note here. What the hell is with the show casting the tallest effing people in the world? Rob and I aren't tall. No taken. But here's the thing. I don't go through life going, I can't get my mug off the shelf. Like, I exist in the world. <laughs> you go on this show, and it's literally... I remember the first time I met Jared Jensen, I was like, holy ball, Jared's tall. Yeah. And Jensen, I'm like, Jensen, you're not short, man. You're like 6'1", 6'2". This is, and he's like, yeah, I know. And people watch you on TV. This is before the conventions were going. It's like, people watch you on TV, they immediately assume, yeah, you're 5'9", 5'10", which makes Jared 5'9", or 5'10". People think I'm 5'5". Five five. <laughs> people think I'm tiny. I'm 6'2", and I'm the short one. <laughs> so, I don't know what your question was, but my spirit animal is otter. I have a question for all of you. Y'all three have seen all three on the show. And I was wondering if y'all are going to be on season 10 at all. Uh, here's the thing. If we are going to be on season 10, we would tell you no. If we're not going to be on season 10, we'd tell you no. If we don't know we're going to be on season 10, we'd tell you no. So quite frankly, it doesn't matter what we say. So the answer to the question is no. No. I know, doesn't it? That's why you love the show. I got one more question for me, Rich. For Matt. Good Matt Cohen? Yes. Good night, everybody. Thank you, guys. I asked you this question two years ago. I can't wait for you to ask me again. Would you still be interested in Magic Mind? Have you not been to karaoke before? Uh, I mean, dude, Magic Mind 2. Yeah. Jake and Tatum messed up. They already filmed it. I'm not in it. Magic Mike 3, you're going to be all over. I'm assuming I'm all over the three pool. I'm, I'm assuming that's a question for all three of us. Absolutely. I'd be very, <laughs> very interested. Robbie? Yeah, yeah I'm Is that part of the manager? Listen, if we, if Rob and I are in Magic Mike, it's about a bad children's magician. <laughs> hey kids, who's 37? Uh, oh, like, anybody oh, seen a rabbit? rabbit? Anybody seen a rabbit? Is it this card? I guess is it this card? Uh, Magic Mike. You. This young lady right here. Hi. Hi. Um, I would just like to say first that Chuck and Gabriel are two of my favorite characters. Chuck and Gabriel, two of my favorite Thank characters. Thank you so much. You know what? You know what? There's a couple people that like Michael. I. Awesome, I'll start. Um, what was one of the most awkward situations you've been on set? Awkward situations on set, Matthew. I'm going to toss it to Robbie because he got the good any, one. Any set or super, Supernatural? Um, Supernatural. 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 Awkward moments on Supernatural. Awkward moments. You guys are so funny. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I've got one. Can you start? No, crap. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I, you got it? I got it. <laughs> Robbie, what was one of the most awkward I got it. Can't you tell I have this? Yeah, you seem very in control of the situation. The most awkward moment I had on set was when I had to hit Jared with the plunger. And I didn't really want to hit him, but it was like a, a, like a plunger that wasn't a real plunger. It had some cushion to it, but it's still an object that I had to smash him in the face. And like we said, he's six forever. And so uh, I came out of the corner and gave him a weak, like a weak little nudge in the chin. And they're like, you gotta really smack him. And so I was like, okay. And then I hauled off and just whacked him. And he was like, whoa, you really got me on that. And I was like, I'm so, I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> but then we did a couple more takes and I started enjoying it. <laughs> and then at the very end, they're like, I think we got it, unless you want to try something different. Like, I actually could use one more. And I just, just to sock him in the head one more time. Me. My awkward moment was doing, uh, I was shooting the cast erotica sequence, the first. <laughs> There's a bit where I say, this is me standing up, and this is me lying down, and behind me, the girl has taken off her bra, and I lay down on the woman. And so, I lay down on the woman, and we're face to face, and you go, cut! And then I sort of have to sit there, because I'm her human towel until somebody comes and wraps her. Because if I can sit up, the whole crew is seeing her, you know, things. And, uh, 
So she so was really all the way naked? She would, so she had little pieces of tape, Robbie, little bit, but you know, not, so, not much, you know? Just enough for you. Yeah. I picked the wardrobe, it was weird. Um, no, so I had that weird moment of like, hey, um, yeah, that, no, because she asked me, she's like, you know, just hang here until I'm like, yeah, no problem. So, um, you feel good about that tape? Is that a good idea? <laughs> Uh, so I've got three kids. Are you jo enjoying your spirit? <laughs> <laughs> really? Somebody run over the towel. So my, this one just learned to walk and... <laughs> my family. No, I tried not to bring up the fan. No? I didn't want to see block myself. No. <laughs> Awkward moments on set. <laughs> you, have you, have, you have lovely bare breasts. By the way, my wife. <laughs> Awkward moments on You like trying to desperately get your wedding ring off just yeah. before the scene. <laughs> That's not, see, Robbie, that's not. <laughs> my wife has a computer, and on YouTube. Oh, because you just told a story about a girl with tape burners. I was working for a living! <laughs> I was shoveling coal, making the train move! But now I know that you recommended your words. I don't know, son. I don't know. Oh, Calvin's dad is not nice. No. I know, son. I know. Tell new daddy. Daddy? Dad. When my wife leaves me over this panel. This panel. And I know my wife should be watching going, wow, this is great, man. She's a lot of chest stuff. I like that bit. That's solid. Kip with Matt, the stripper bit. What's Robbie saying? <laughs> oh my wedding ring. You, what do you what do you tell the story about hitting on my wife in the lobby of a hotel? <laughs> uh, I love that the one time I get a joke in on him, I get a real good singer and then everybody goes, wow, man. wow. <laughs> and then you pull in, everyone in on it. You're like, oh, wow. oh BS, you're the <laughs> awe guy. You're the like, oh, everybody's like, oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna smack you in the face. I saw this really attractive lady as they're like checking in at the front desk and her bottom looked really nice in her jeans. And I was like, wait till Rich gets down, I gotta tell him about this uh, great pleasant looking woman with a really nice tush. And true story. And so I'm googling, goggling, googling, goggling, looking at this woman in her red jeans, red jeans, and she turned around and it was his wife. And I was like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> I've never been mentioned. The weird thing is, I busted after his wife. Now cut, cut to me coming down the elevator and just walking in the lobby and like, hey, Rob, and he's like, Rich, you gotta confess. <laughs> this is why I'm a good friend. It's why I'm a good friend. I, I busted after your wife, I'm so sorry. But my, my, the funny thing is, is my wife, didn't know anything about it. Like, you could have died with that information. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, like, I gotta tell you something, Rich. She looked at those trousers. <laughs> Real flattering from the backside. <laughs> Kudos to your tailor. <laughs> yes. Save us. Good job. That was not in the episode I was filming. Uh, she's talking about the behind the scenes thing for her season nine, right? <laughs> that was a bit, that whole thing, that whole, that whole episode is Misha's brainchild. He, he created it and he directed it and he had this idea. At that point, I was not slated to be in the season. So I didn't know I'd be doing an episode and neither did he. And he thought it'd be really funny if I was just hanging on the set doing some menial job. <laughs> Kind of wedge, trying to wedge my way back on the show, so we, I went up there and did the whole hanging out, you know, being the the, the food server, and uh, then I ended up being in the show, so it seemed like I was probably there doing the thing. That was when they were shooting, as you could tell, 
Tim Amundsen's episode. He was up there shooting his he's in the parking lot where we're at, so. I literally went up there for an afternoon and shot it and came back. But it was fun to be a part of it. And, and I think Nisha did a great job with that thing. I think it was super fun. Yes. Okay, so this is a bit of an odd question, but I was wondering if you had to take a bath in something other than water, what would it be? Uh, you know what? That really reminds me of a story. It sure does. <laughs> you involve my wife in red pants? Because it's too... I'm going to say Jello. from the uh, vendor's room, and I can use that cash to then buy either black tar heroin or one of the other drugs I use. Don't buy the people, it's pharmaceutical. Whatever. Point is, it's easier to pay with cash. So, if I can get here and get some of my hands in the cash box, then I can actually go by the drugs I need to sustain my sense of, of well-being. What Rich is trying to say is um, that we do this for y'all, I think. Yeah. By street drug, I meant you be. You guys are black tar heroin. Yes. We are fully addicted and enjoy every moment of the high with y'all. I can't stop saying y'all, y'all. They keep, uh, you know, they keep asking us to come back. And... I will tell you, if you get a chance to go to a hotel filled with a thousand people who love you, do it. <laughs> it's worth the experience. There's also this, Rich. There's also this. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Chest it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do so much with the chest bit, but you do, and that's, that's my thing now, so. Um, With the hi. chest cut. I was wondering what you thought when you learned that Gabriel was not only an archangel, but a pagan god, because he was such a rebel that he wasn't satisfied with only that title. I just now found out from you for the first time that I was both a pagan god and an archangel. I had no idea. Guys, I forgot. No, um, I would, you know, I, the fact that he was Loki was awesome and it was cool and I loved creating that, you know, those characteristics and all that. When they added the spin that he was an archangel, I was flabbergasted, completely thrown by it. I thought it worked really well. Whether they planned it or it was just a happy accident, I don't know. But I thought it worked seamlessly and I loved being... I love the fact that my character got to be a part of the actual story, as opposed to just being a one-off who was screwing with the boys. I really enjoyed being worked into the actual story. Why? Did it make you mad? <laughs> no, I rather enjoyed it. Good. And we, then once again, we're exactly the same. Thank you for the question. <coughs> you, young lady. I mean, sire. Uh, so, Rich was part of the mock documentary, and I was just wondering if Matt and Rob were planning anything to get back at the ship or not. Yes. Yeah. Well, definitely it's in the works. And boy, the plan is elaborate. Yeah, don't go into it, guys. It'll Some people cool. will never walk again, and they will be hurt emotionally. And, and it's, it's actually, he's talking about me. He's using me so fast, he's going to just hit me with the tire iron. Take me right out of the knees. Take me right out. That's good. No, I'll never walk again. No, yes. We, no, we were hurt. We were, collectively, we were hurt. We were hurt. But we deal with it. Now that we're shipping. There's the bit. There you go. There's the uh, sound bite. It's okay. So, he loves us. Yeah, you know what? He loves us. Mad you just can't Your awe is not as powerful as it is for Rob. You're very much a Rob crowd, I can tell. Hey, he loves us. He does. Did you see him give you a hug when you first saw him? He's in Misha. He's always happy to see you. Oh, stupid Kelsey. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. 
wants you to rub his chest. Right? <laughs> Dick in the chest. And you know what? If Jensen did chest, he would be like this. <laughs> chest. <laughs> oh, bitch. You. Um, okay, this is for all three of y'all. Uh, it's another ridiculous one. Would you rather have a puppy sized elephant or an elephant sized puppy? That's a ridiculous one. <laughs> I'm gonna go with neither. My yard's not big enough. Puppy sized elephant or elephant sized elephant sized puppy? because that would be the cutest thing ever. Make a lot of mess. I'd have to go with a pocket-sized elephant. Oh, God! Oh, yeah. Whee! Well, that's not good. That's not good. That was not it at all. That was, that was... You remind me of a pocket-sized elephant. Thank you. That was my nickname in college. Oh, you got my nickname. up? Chest, oh, like ch chest, chest okay. loves you back. Something bad about you, Minutes, I still love you too. But Rich, uh, yesterday yeah. during his panel, he was really excited that you didn't get to defend yourself about the Perth story. About the what story? The he hates Perth story. Yeah. Could you tell us your version? Yeah, I'll tell you my version. Uh, <laughs> I, I, no, I, I bet, I, no, I bet it matches your version. We were at a we were at a panel in Australia, in Sydney, I believe. And this young lady, after being a big gay girl fan, was excited to meet me, and she was emotional. And I was trying to calm her down, going, "Hey, you're, it's nice to meet you too. Where are you from?" And she said, "Perth." And I literally go, "Oh, Rob hates Perth." He's sitting right next to me, and Rob goes, ah, "What?" And she was weeping, and her friends were weeping. So the joke was lost on everybody but me, who thought it was hilarious. And Rob was immediately, I know, I hate that. No, you're perfect, I'm not a... And, and one of them said, we, we take offense to that. But I thought the best way to handle the situation was to hammer home how much Rob hates Perth over the entire weekend. I thought they would see the irony in that and that would become, obviously, a joke. So I really went after it. The Rob, the Aunt Rob Perth thing. And, you know... I mean, I apologize to people of Perth for Rob hating you. Uh, so when you cut this YouTube clip, just take that one piece out, put it on YouTube, and they'll think the joke is still alive. Is that, is that about what you That's said? That's exactly how I told it, is it not? It was, but you were like, Rob hates it when I tell the story, because he always interrupts me, and he, I, you were just excited that he wasn't here to tell the story. Wait, what? I think she read it. Yeah, I said, Rich, I hate it when I, just Rich always interrupts me, and I never get to what? tell my side of it. I didn't really, Rich, never, what do you say? We love, we love you too. I love all of you. Thank you. And we you also love you. you. We, we both we we love, love you back more than Rich. It was, pretty, it was, pretty, it was pretty funny. I, I told them, it was just this joke that, it's the genius of your joking, that no matter, you just let it, you didn't even have to do anything. Dude, have you done your bit? Rob an invitation to me, starting a joke, do the bit, the, the, the rolling motor thing. Like, well, yeah, he's like, he starts the joke. And then he lets it go, oh, there it goes. Rich, you gotta stop that. I'm not making it. This is just not, it's just going. I can't make it. So, oh, stop. No, no, there it's going. There it goes. Oh, it's turning a corner now. It's on its own. I'm gonna jump, bloom into a huge tree. And he was like, rrr, rrr, rrr. And, you know, by Sunday, every person I passed was like, you know, it's actually a great city. And, and no matter how much I did, I got it. The great part about it was, Rob would, some people would say, like, but the Perth joke, and I, and, and I, I would be like, yeah, no, it's weird. Like, I'm being totally straight. Like, Stop doing that! They think, it's, they think it's true. I'm like, well, it is true and it isn't true. Like, I wouldn't commit, but I wouldn't uncommit. Man, it drove you nuts. Ah, that's the worst. I can tell you've gotten over it, though. And good for you. All right, right here. I ended up missing going to my boyfriend's homecoming because I got invited to be here. Yes, really we're a lot less handsy than that Perth would have been. <laughs> You're gonna, gonna survive on stage this weekend. Sebastian's not here. Ask him to my homecoming though, and I was hoping if you guys would help. What? I was gonna ask him to my homecoming, and I was hoping you guys would help. 
Well, my friend. Sure, we're all for it. But uh, wait, how, do, how do we help? I was hoping you could maybe like come back here and then like we could each say a couple of words and be like, hey, will you go to homecoming with me or something? Where is he? He is in Houston right now, but I was going to record a video and then send it to him. Oh, you were going to record a video? Yes. I. No, 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 the little girl Miss her, she understands, I appreciate that, baby. I appreciate that. All right, ma'am. Um, yeah, we'll record a, a homecoming video, get your thing, let's go. Chop, choppy, up here on stage. I think, I think the theme of this should be, take her to homecoming or Matt's going with you. It made me cry. <laughs> it was cut out. And 
I was so sad. <laughs> My first uh, job was, they did a live theater, they did a play, a member of the wedding, they did this play in Tennessee, in Nashville, but they broadcast it live on NBC. So I had one line in the thing, but we had to rehearse for three weeks. So it was, it was like doing theater, but they actually just broadcast the whole thing live on uh -huh. prime time. I was 13, 13 years old, 12, something like that, and, and I remember my lines had a very thick southern accent at the time. And I said, Frankie, Frankie, is Mary here? And she says something about seeing my name written down on the concrete. And I go, if I could find out who wrote it, I'd rub it out with their faces. <laughs> my line of dialogue. I didn't know, I didn't know they had to that. Sierra Nevada, uh, <laughs> just the back side of it, you know. Well, we don't want to promote We're trained training. professionals. <laughs> you don't want any labels facing out. Uh, Matt, Matt, did you want to you guys know this about... Nope. Uh, what? You want to... Oh, he had a question that we were... No, going. I don't want to answer. Okay. I don't want to answer. Um, when we're shooting, one of the things... The, I would say one of the most difficult aspects of the job... For sure. ...is that when you have a bottle or a can of something, uh, you got to make sure not to face the label toward the camera because that could get into liability issues. Yes. So true. Uh, you know, so, so very true. So this is how we would hold it. Unless uh -huh. it's a product placement situation. <laughs> like a refreshing Pepsi <laughs> Max. This q &A brought to you by Sierra Nevada. So Sierra Nevada were to see Misha and Matthew and Rob all promoting their product and, and wanted to send us from Sierra Nevada. They would send it to us in the mail. For free. For free. For, for life, preferably. And it's my favorite beer in the world. It's so, it, it's so refreshing. I mean, how can we not hold it out label first to the entire crowd and the weather sphere and the Twitter sphere? I, I mean, like really? Our hands are tied. Everybody smile, friends. What if that backfires instead we all get sent to rehab? <laughs> They have a problem. Sierra Nevada's um, like, we do not condone. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, maybe I forgot to do this. Mr. Misha Collins. Yeah, we need to have any. I'm sorry, you were having a No, 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 we were having a Misha Collins conversation earlier. And I don't remember what in what context. But I, we, I can tell you if you want to know. Go with it. Someone said uh, to Matt and Rob, are you upset that you weren't in the uh, mockumentary you made? Right. And what you, you were very upset. About? And, and you should, should wait till Misha gets on stage. He, Look out. No, I'm <laughs> just he, he was crying. He started crying. And I said, okay, he really likes us. He likes us. No, but then Rob rubbed his chest and things got weird. And then it got weird. But you know, it wasn't weird. And then it went over here and then it got weird. Understood. Uh, the way that really went down is uh, is Rich heard about the uh, mockumentary. He was like, I would love to be in that. I lobbied hard. I will do anything to be in that. I'm gonna, I'll fly up. I'll uh, suck your cock. I did not say I would fly up. I did not say I would fly up. Richard, I would fly up. You think it's not the test too much? Uh, I was not gonna fly up. Let him tell the real story, Rich. I said, I said, that's that would be great, that would be great, yeah, yeah. I thought, you've got a soft mouth, let's do that. And, and so, and then he said, now, hey, hey, before you hang up, he, uh, hey, what do you keep this from, from Rob and Matt? Like, I think those, those guys were kind of bummed out and not be included in this, but I don't want to include them in this, so. The reason being, we just yeah, keep this he wanted to exclude us is because, Rich has a soft mouth, but boy, oh boy. It's like sandpaper. <laughs> wow, wow. And you didn't want to share a bed with me. Right. Everything's in perspective. We, 
Okay, I'm sorry, we didn't do that. Erase that from your bones. Sorry, man. <laughs> when I said something cock, I meant I have a rooster. Yeah. I can't believe your head went there. You're so dirty. He likes to, he loves roosters. You people are so filthy. <laughs> the whole... I'll be backstage. Um, <laughs> so you were about to, I'm sorry, I interrupted. You were about to ask a question, answer a question. Oh no, you're going to be on that one. <laughs> we just went to Weirdville. Population 2000. Um, well, I can't believe all this from the guy who wouldn't share a bed with me. What? Yeah. I didn't want to share a bed with you. I did not say I wouldn't blow you. <laughs> Why would he share? We went to Milan. Tell, tell, tell the very flattering story. We, we, we went to Milan. Oh, that's we, right. We go to this room, beautiful room, huge, huge, like king size California king. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I go to the one, God, it's so beautiful. Like, oh, it's amazing. And he's like, what bed? What are we gonna, who's going to sleep on the floor? And who? Oh, I got to call us down, get us moved to a room with two beds. So we don't have to. Now, I, I have a brother. Like, we need people, they were grown ups. I'm comfortable with who I am. Yeah. Oh, no shit. <laughs> You're very comfortable with who Matt is. What is too comfortable, I think, is the message We've here. figured out that you're very, very comfortable with you. You're very comfortable with Matt. You're very comfortable with Matt's chest. You're very comfortable with Matt's chest. You just mind sucked me off. <laughs> He just rested easy that we didn't have to share a blanket. That's right? I have a Yep, I stand You behind. understand, don't you? I understand. I would never make that mistake. No, you would capitalize on those moments of drop. <laughs> it's like old, old, old thigh scratcher over there. I that. never made anything bad. I got okay. nothing weird was going to happen in that bed. <laughs> nothing weird was going to happen. Well, we'll never know now, will we? <laughs> Fortunately. I mean, unfortunately. Oh, rats, I missed my shot. Too bad that it, You know, here's the thing. This story bugs the crap out of me. Because the way he tells it is not accurate. Yes, we went in, there was one bed. We were also with my brother-in-law and cousin-in-law, and they'd given my brother-in-law the bed, the room with two beds. That was part of our group. So we were in the wrong room. So I said, let's cross the hall and go to the room with two beds. Sweaty. And and, and Michael and my cousin-in-law said, yeah, let's do that. And Rob's like, I don't understand the big deal, Rich. We can share a bed right here, Rich. Why well, walk across the hall? We can just be right here in the same bed, Rich. We don't need two separate beds. How are we going to talk? How are we going to connect? Let's lay in the same bed. It's so weird. When Michael needs to have two beds. Michael wants to have, there's one guy, he needs two beds. We're two guys, we need one bed. You're an idiot, Rich. And I'm trying to follow the luck. I'm like, I, I, we, I, I don't get it. Okay, get the bucket. Oh, <laughs> 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 